make sure we... Good morning, Mac U. I just want to welcome all you guys in here today. Today we have E Squared with us. Can we just make them feel welcome this morning? I also just want to welcome in our uh, online audience today. It's great to have you guys here. Let's go ahead and stand this morning. Let's go into worship. Come on. On this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. And failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Yeah. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. not the end game the journey's where you are you never wanted perfect you just wanted my heart and the story isn't over if the story isn't good failure's never final when the father's in the room yeah. failure's never final when the father's in the room Singing love is on the move when the father's in the room. Prison doors fling wide, the dead come to life. Singing love is on the move when the father's in the room. Listen, Claire, come on. Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. The love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Ooh, yeah. Your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house, check your shame. Jesus. Would you just give him some praise this morning? His name is power, his name is healing, and his name is life. Let's just sing to him this morning and give him praise.
start to forget all of the great things you did when did I throw away faith for the impossible and how did I start to believe you weren't sufficient for me why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles?
sing that chorus one more time. We thank you so much for this moment. We thank you so much that we're able to gather here in your presence, Lord. God, I thank you so much for the students that are here. God, I just pray that they find their home here, Lord. I pray that they find everything that they've been looking for, whether it be in you or in a school, Lord. I just pray that you hold your hand over us as we finish out this, this month, Lord, and just walk into new possibilities, God. Thank you so much for your son. It's in your precious name I pray. And good morning, Evangels. It's great to see all of you here today, and I want to especially welcome those who are joining us online. And I want to take a special moment to welcome all of you who are prospective and incoming students. We're thrilled to have you here at MacU today. We look forward to having you as Evangels. Let's welcome them again. Now, the people who know best about what it's like to be in MacU Evangel are sitting all around you, so I hope you'll take time to ask some questions of our students, our faculty, and our staff, but I just want to say welcome. We are thrilled to have you on campus today. I also want to encourage all of our students to fill out the student survey that came out in your email just a few days ago. That's an incredible opportunity for you to give input to the experience here at MacU in the classroom, in the cafe, on the, on the fields, in the courts. Uh, we want to hear from you, so take time to fill out your survey this week. And I hope to see you tonight at the basketball games. We've got a big night on campus, uh, both for our women and for our men. I hope to see you. We're going to have a great time and look forward to that. You know, every week in chapel, we try to bring in speakers who can help us to draw closer to God and who can inspire us to do great things. That's our vision here at MacU, preparing people to do great things for God and his kingdom. Today, I've invited a great friend of MacU, Dick Greenlee, to come and tell us his story. He and his wife, Terry, own Pumps of Oklahoma. They deal with water drilling equipment and uh, supplies, and, and they're involved in all kinds of incredible projects here locally. But 20 years ago, Dick went on a mission trip, and he felt the call of God upon his life to do something about the, the crisis of water in our world. God ultimately led him to form a, a group called Water 4, and that group is truly transforming lives around the world. You're going to be inspired as you hear not only about water wells, but about how people are coming to Christ through this organization. This is the kind of thing that we are preparing students to do in the future. And I want Dick to come and share his heart and his story. So let's give a warm Mackey welcome to Dick Greenlee. Thank you so much for being here. Wow, nice introduction. Set the bar high. I thought I'd give a little bit of my testimony first. When I was younger, I used to drink from a bottle and sleep with another man's wife, and then I turned two years old. <laughs> Cue the laughter! <laughs> so, you'll get it. Come on, you'll get it. <laughs> it's good to be back here. Thank you, President Phil. This is... Uh, it's fun to be here. I was on the board for several years a while back, and uh, Mac Hughes always near and dear to my heart. Way to go, you guys. Coming here for a visit is the best. So way to go. This is really great that you're here. I'm going to talk a little bit uh, this morning about three questions that um, one of my disciples, uh, Dr. Cliff Sanders, um, I've been working with him, trying to bring him along. Anyway, this is I, I kind of ripped this off from him. Uh, th three questions that are really imperative to know the answers to. And the earlier you get this, the better it is. So 
what is God like? Uh, what's he like when it comes down to it? Isn't this kind of why you're at Mac U? I'm sh- yeah, I'm sure sports and trying to get a degree and maybe you didn't know what to do, so you just decided to enroll here. But deep down, all of us want to know what God's like, and this is a fantastic place to try to figure that out. So what is God like? What does God want from me? What, what is God... What does God want from me? Um, That's a good one. And what should or what can I expect from him? What can we expect from God? The answer to that one is goodness. He is good. So I'll, I'll jump ahead. The answer to that one is goodness. That's what you can expect from him. These fundamental questions have to be answered for followers of Jesus These fundamental questions have to be answered in our life's journey. And as I mentioned, the sooner we can figure out these three questions, uh, the better it is for us. So in Ephesians, Paul talks about us being God's workmanship, God's handiwork, God's work of art created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. He says in John, Jesus said in John 15, right at the end of his hours on earth, he said, it's to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So as we're going through these questions of what is God like and what does he want from me and what can I expect from him, these are some of the answers that we can find and study and, and, and meditate on of being God's work of art. What does it mean to be God's work of art? That's what you all are here today. His work of art created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for you to do. You could say he might know that this setting was going to happen sometime with us here, with you attending MACU, with you teaching here, with you being in the administration in this great organization, and for you all visiting that he might have known that this was going ha- to happen before you were even created. And he has really great things for us to do, and he wants us to do great things to show how good he is. So what, is God, what does God want from me? In, in 2004, most of you weren't even alive then, in 2004... Um, I was, we have a, my wife and I own a pump company, uh, Pumps of Oklahoma downtown here, Oklahoma City. We sell water pumps and oil well pumps and environmental cleanup equipment and things like that. So in, in 2004, this guy wandered into my office, had an appointment, and we were talking about a titanium dioxide remediation cleanup in Alabama. And um, we were talking about, okay, where, where's the equipment going to lie and what's it going to set and how's, what's the filtration, blah, 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 all this. And I mean, it's not riveting, but he kept <laughs> like that. And we're talking about, okay, where are we going to set this equipment? What's the power supply? <laughs> and I'm like, dude, am I keeping you up? What's going on? And he goes, well, I just got, it. I just got in from Taiwan um, and I'm out of vacation time, so I just came straight here to this meeting. And I go, Taiwan, what were you doing in Taiwan? He goes, I was planting churches. So panic sets in. Okay, come up with a church answer. What's a church answer? Give me a church answer. Oh, um, yeah, wow, Taiwan, planting churches. I'd like to go on a mission trip sometime. <laughs> you know, and I had no intention of ever going on a mission trip because from the tradition that I came from, a mission trip was getting some getting the youth group together and some men and women and going down to Juarez, Mexico and doing a vacation Bible school for the kids in the village and then the men putting the 55th coat of paint on the pastor's house. That was a mission trip. And I mean, it's good for some. It just wasn't my cup of tea. So I like to go on a mission trip sometime is what I said to him. And he goes, really? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And I'm just like, ah, no, no, let's get back to talking about titanium dioxide. And he goes, I want to go to mainland China, and I want to plant churches in mainland China. I'm like, isn't that illegal? And he's like, oh, yes, very illegal. Well, it's starting to get my, uh, my interest now. 
an illegal trip. I like that. And he goes, he goes, well, you have solar pumps, don't you? And I'm like, yeah, we have solar pumps. And he goes, we could go into these remote villages in southern China where there's no electricity and where women have to haul water. Little girls can't go to school because there's no water. And he goes, we could put in solar pumps. And then everywhere we put a solar pump in, we could plant a church. I'm like, how are you going to do that? And he goes, oh, well, we have to get an official invitation from the Ministry of Public Health. And i like, do you know anybody in the Ministry of Public Health? No. And we have to make contact with the underground church. And he's Chinese, so he had a better chance than I did because he speaks Mandarin. And I said, I, he said, we have to get in touch with the underground church. Do you know anybody in the underground church? No. So inside I'm going, yeah, baby, there's no way this is going to happen. <laughs> 1.6 billion people in the, in the country of China, and he has to get in touch with, and get an invitation from the Ministry of Public Health. Well, three and a half months later, I wake up in a hut in southern China <laughs> next to some pigs because they bring their livestock in at night. And <coughs> I couldn't tell if I was snoring or the pigs were grunting, whatever it was. And we ended up going to southern China, getting an invitation from the Ministry of Public Health. Uh, of course, they wanted us to check in for our interviews. Back then, you had to go for interviews if you went into the country of China and be uh, interviewed by public security and our rooms were bugged, all that stuff, um, because we're Westerners. And of course, we show up three days early so we could get a head start on some of our church planning stuff. And I'm like, dude, are, are we going to get in trouble? And he goes, well, if we get caught, it won't be good for us. But OK, let's raise. So after 35 hours of travel getting over there, uh, we end up in a, in a remote village from one of the underground church members. And the first thing that we do is, is we, get to, we get to tell the chief of the village who we were staying with about Jesus and his whole household came to know Jesus that night. It was amazing. It was all in Mandarin. The Holy Spirit is universal in language. Uh, I could tell exactly what was going on in between my nodding off from the 35 hours of travel. But uh, uh, it was absolutely amazing. We check in with the Ministry of Public Health and the Public Security on that next Monday. We ended up, we ended up uh, three trips to China. We, every place we'd ship solar pumps over every place we put a solar pump in every place the entire village came to Christ the entire village came to Christ I've never seen anything like that in my life and so something was stirring and my wife and I because I mean we just bought this business so we we're way in debt and she's like so you're going on illegal or you could get put in jail I'm like I don't think they'll keep me I'm not a keeper I think they'd send me away back to America and uh, so we're like, this is really, I mean, every place we put a solar pump in, we could do this the rest of our careers, is just put solar pumps in and lead people to Jesus. This is amazing. I get to do the fun part, which is put in solar pumps because I'm not that good at Mandarin. So um, the underground church people got to go to these remote villages and be our workers. And they didn't know a solar pump from anything, um, but they were our workers according to the Ministry of Public Health and so forth. I was talking to one of the one of the missionary uh, young men. He was about your age. He had cigarette burns up and down his arms from being tortured, from being put in prison, uh, just for wanting uh, the people wanting to know who's your pastor, where do you meet, how many people, where do you get your funding, who are the other people, and he wouldn't tell him anything. He was beaten, he was starved, he was burned. Uh, and his wife as well. They were arrested on a college campus for sharing about Jesus. So I'm talking through the translator, and I'm like, dude, uh, why are you with us? This is so dangerous for you, for you being here with us, because what we're doing is overtly against their laws. And he looked at me, and he said, brother, he said, guards need to know the love of Jesus prisoners need to know the love of Jesus. What does it matter where I am? It was a level of dedication I have never seen. And this is, I think this is the essence of why you all are here. I mean, it's, it's fun to play sports. It's, it's good to make good grades. But the idea that we figure out 
what Jesus wants from us and what we can expect from him and what's he, what God's like, that's the idea of why, why you are here and what you're doing because what we're doing is, is um, so kingdom-minded that we can actually commune with the creator of the universe. And this is the kind of dedication that I didn't even know was there. When, I mean, it gets, it, you know, I go to church and it gets to five minutes till 12. My tummy's growling a little bit and I start holding my watch up. Hey, pastor, you need to wrap it up. You know, and here's this, these men and women being tortured uh, for their love of Jesus. Well, maybe Pumps of Oklahoma, our, our pump company, maybe we were designed for a specific purpose created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance. Maybe that's a thing. Maybe we should start believing that what we're doing, that it really is a thing. So this is, this um, our, our missionaries got caught after our third time there. They got caught and put back in prison, so it wasn't safe for us to be there. They were evangelizing again on college campuses, and they got caught, but we were associated with them, so it wasn't safe for us to go back. What we did is we took one step. Leon came into my office. We started talking about a remediation, just as innocent as can be. He asked, do you want to go on a trip? And we took one step that came to us, one opportunity that came our, into our sphere of influence, and we said yes to that. We had a willingness to say yes to that one opportunity. And, and we kept saying yes to these little tiny things that would come in. Hey, do you, can you figure out a way to manually drill a water well? Well, we did. We figured out a way where we can drill a 150-foot well by hand. And where wells over in Africa cost ten to $20,000, we could do this for 1000 bucks, And we could train the young men and women to be the well drillers and give them jobs because over in Africa, the average wage on some of these rural areas that we work is $2 per day. And here they have an opportunity to make maybe 50 bucks a week, which is amazing money, and get water for their villages. So in 2008, so 2004 is when I, I was introduced to the China thing. And then in 2008, we decided people kept trying to give us money and and I said, that's weird. And all of our friends said, yeah, that's really weird that they want to give you money and uh, to go do stuff. And, I'm, and they said, the smart people in my life said, you need to make it where you can take money from them. And I'm like, well, what's that? Well, you got to start a nonprofit. Oh, good grief. I don't want to start a nonprofit. I like profit. And so in 2008, we started Water 4. Um, and it was just a piece of paper to be able to accept a donation. And we just kept saying yes, and Sierra Leone, Zambia, Uganda, North Korea, Ethiopia, India, Ghana, Senegal, Kenya, Rwanda. The list goes on, 45 different countries that we'd been in, showing people how to manually drill water wells as a business. Um, and it's all going from taking that first step, that willingness to know what God's like, and what does he want from me? And what can I expect from him taking that one step? Go ahead and play the video right now, the short video. Potential. Potential.
We got good video guys. So we started with uh, going to China and installing solar pumps. We evolved or devolved to manual drilling where we drilled thousands, 10,000 wells like that. And now we've moved into piped water utilities where we bring in water to people's homes and they pay three cents a day for the water so that that revenue keeps flowing to hire the people to keep the water running and build the next system over in the next village over. We've gotten two and a half million people uh, clean water. Uh, we, we're operating 13,000 utilities. We're getting water to a million people a day. And the best part about it, in my opinion, is my wife Terry and I always wanted to keep Jesus in the, in the forefront of what we were doing here in America and over in Africa. So where we had to do sanitation and hygiene training, uh, we just tacked on uh, Discovery Bible studies at the end of our training. And we thought, oh, this would be nice, and we can help people learn a little bit about Jesus and the stories by verbally telling stories. And it has taken off like we can't imagine. To, uh, this week, we had 20,000 in our Bible, uh, we had 20,000 Bible studies, had about 300,000 weekly meeting in our Bible studies. And it's growing to the point where we can't keep track of how many of these are doing. This is all from saying yes one time to a guy coming into my office one time in the, in the normal everyday occurrence of how life works. And, and maybe that's how we can get an idea of how God does work in our lives around the everyday occurrences of what are, what are around us. So what does God expect from you? You've been given this incredible gift of this great college education. Where I go, there's nothing like this in these remote villages and so forth. And you guys have been given this remarkable gift. So what do you do with that gift? You all have to kick butt and take names is what you need to do. You need to be the best student that's out there. You need to learn from these godly leaders that have been put into your life 
and this great administration that runs this college, you need to be the best at what you're doing. Be the best teammate. You all have two games tonight. You be the best teammate. You always have your teammates' backs, always. Uh, you leave it all out on the field. Whenever you walk onto the practice field, whenever you walk on to the court, you leave it all out there. You've heard the saying, practice makes perfect. That ain't right. Perfect practice makes perfect. And that's every time you walk out on the court, every time you walk out on the field, you leave it all out there. So that when an opportunity does come to, to do something extraordinary, and it will, when, the, when these opportunities do come to have a Jesus effect in somebody's life, you're going to be able to say yes. So um, wh what, what, is, what does Jesus uh, expect from me? Seeking Jesus in all circumstances is probably the, probably the most important thing that you can take away from this, especially when you mess up. My, my, I have a 19-year-old brain in here. I have a college brain in an old man's body. And I know about messing up. So what, what's the, what is the first thing that we do when we sin, when we mess up? We want to we step away from God. And that's the exact opposite of what we should be doing. We should be running towards God and confessing when we mess up. Uh, John writes... In 1 John, my little children, I'm writing these things so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. And by this, we know that we've come to know him if we keep our commandments. And then there's a passage in Hebrews chapter 7 that says, consequently, he is able to uh, save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. God is always living to make intercession for us. He knows we're going to mess up. So don't run from God when you do. Run to God when you do. And you will mess up. Let's try not to, but you are going to mess up. 19-year-old Dick Greenlee's always messing up. And what, what I've learned is God made provision for that. So so stay close to God. Don't shy away when you goof up. That's what he's expecting from us. That's what he wants from us is this constant communion with him. And do the things that are in your life right now. Don't be looking, don't be always looking over the horizon for when I finally get there. Don't be looking to that. Always, well, when this happens, then I'll be there. When this happens, then I'll be there. Do the things that in your life right now, do them with excellence, do them with energy, do them with joy. And you'll look up one day to the applause of holy Jesus. And that, I think that's the highest aspiration that we can look for, is to look up one day to the applause of holy Jesus, and that is what he expects from us. I really appreciate being here this morning. Um, you guys keep doing good. You're just... <laughs> You have such a great opportunity. Um, so just keep Jesus close to you in everything that you do. Jesus, be with us right now. We love you and we praise you. Holy God, speak to us in the way that you always do. And in your holy name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed.